So I'm going to tell you why I'm here and how I got involved. Um, my nephew, Joseph Jensen, Joe Jensen, my namesake, even though they claim it wasn't, but it's the same name, so I don't know what that was about. <laughs> um, struggled his whole life, lived in eastern Washington, and was incarcerated three times. These are um, back there, and you're welcome to take them. This is some graphics that Joey did. So this is computer graphics, and he took the word hope, education, opportunity, and those are the only three words that are used on this. 18 years locked up to pay for my mistakes. It's never too late to turn things around. I have paid my debt. I will be, not be held back by the judgment of others. I will prosper, have a positive impact on society in which I live. Like the phoenix, I will rise from the ashes of my former existence and be reborn. I shall rise above. Joseph Gary Jensen, Post-Prison Education Program. So um, Joey did three visits. <laughs> First time he got out, called Aunt Jo. I said, yeah, come on. And he came and lived with me for a year. Um, fell off the wagon with drugs. And I didn't understand that people could fall off and like get back on and get straightened out. And so we had a no drug policy. And he moved on. Wasn't very long before he violated and ended up incarcerated again. Second time, Aunt Jo, I said, yep, come on home. And he was changed. He was hard. He was bitter. He was angry. I had lost him. Um, and he was only there about a month, and he was gone. There was no touching him. And um, so now we go to Walla Walla, and he's in for quite a while. And the letters at first were all about, you know, I didn't have the right attorney, and I've been framed, and all the typical stuff that I had heard many a time. And um, then something started changing, and he started looking at that he had mental health issues, and that he had some responsibility of figuring out how to deal with that. And he, I guess he met Moses. I always called him Ari, but I'm finding now that <laughs> the inside term was Moses. Um, and he got his AA while he was incarcerated. And now I'm waiting for that phone call. And meanwhile, my life has sort of been disrupted. My husband's passed away, other family members. And I'm like, but I'm, my door is still open. And he called and he goes, Aunt Joe, I got it. I said, what do you mean you got it? And he said, oh, I've got a scholarship for WSU. I've got housing. I've got it all. Ari's helped me. He's got me in the direction. And I'm, I'm fine. I'll come visit, but I don't need to stay. OK. So. Um, he made the dean's list. He got hired by WSU for the graphics program. Um, he was giving back to society. I saw Joe have joy for the first time in his life. Not because of drugs, not because of any other stimuli, but truly because he was experiencing life. And that's a pretty amazing thing to do. Um, regretfully, Joe's dad had died of ALS and Joe started having symptoms of ALS and he took his life. Um, the good side of that, though, is we said goodbye to him. He was full of joy. He was full of knowing what really, truthfully, life was about. So why am I here? Because I get to experience miracles. And how often do you get to do that? And um, yes, this is a fundraiser. Yes, there is an ask. And if you guys are so inclined, there's paperwork in the back. You can do credit cards. We can do checks. Checks are wonderful because they get 100%. Um, I can't say enough about this program, and I started doing nonprofits. I think I was 24. I'm 70 now, and I keep finding harder ones. I thought the rape was hard, but this is harder. But so at 80, I'm going to go to puppies and kitties, just so you know. <laughs> so Artie, Ari has 10 more years of me, and then I'm done. Okay. So any questions or anything I can answer for you? Yes, sir. Okay.